lesson is on imaginary jungles and the imaginary jungles of Henri Rousseau. If you look at Henri Rousseau paintings, you get a lot of ideas on um, plants, animals, insects. You'll see the plant interactions. And if we think about lines and look at some of the imaginary jungles we see, we can use, you can use a lot of line in a painting of a, a landscape. The lines we're going to be talking about today are going to be parallel lines, perpendicular lines, line segments, and then we're going to use some angles, obtuse angles and angles, and we're also going to put a ray in our painting. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting a horizon line. And in math, it's like a line, it's a line that never ends. Well here, the horizon line never ends. It continues and it wraps right around the entire globe. In math, when you draw a line that's never ending, you put your little arrows on each end just like that. And that shows it's never ending. Well, that's the same thing with our horizon line. We'll go right off the page and it's a perfectly straight line. In, in art, it's a line that tells you where the earth meets the sky. So I'm going to stick that in just real quick. And while I'm at my brown, I'm going to go ahead and stick in a tree. So no imaginary jungle is without a tree. So where my line of my tree comes up straight, it's going to intersect right here, the ground and my horizon line. And this is going to form a right angle. This is the right angle. I'll draw it in little lines here. It's going to form a right angle on each side, actually. And there's another right angle. So whenever a line intersects another line and it forms this right angle, this line is called perpendicular. It's a perpendicular line to the line to the horizon line. So my trees, I could say then, are perpendicular to the ground. I can stick two trees in if I want to. My other one only had one. I can stick another one in here. There, just for the f fun of it. And I can continue my trees. Now in art, when we make trees, we make them, I make them from a Y coming down off this perpendicular line. And then I go ahead and add some branches. Now, wherever a branch begins and ends, here's my branch beginning here. And then it's ending, say if it ends right here. This is considered a line segment. So I can use branches to illustrate my knowledge of line segments. Maybe I have a one coming off at an angle right here. Now look, this angle isn't quite a right angle. This almost looks like a 45 degree angle coming off that tree. So I'm going to stick another line segment here. And then I'm going to set a shorter segment here. This is a beginning end point. So a branch has a beginning point where it comes out from here and an end point where it ends at the tip of the branch. I can add a lot of my segments to this tree with, through branches right in here. I can even add another branch here if I want to with some more line segments. These are measurable, one point to one point, and I can measure it, one point to one point, beginning and end. Once you've done your branches, I, use, I like to fill up my tree with a lot of branches, and as I get to the tips, I like to get smaller and smaller and smaller, so your line segments are getting smaller and skinnier. So there's a tree in my imaginary Henri Rousseau garden, or jungle. Now I can go ahead and stick some um, parallel lines in. And if you take your brush, parallel lines are two lines that are drawn, that are equal distance apart, and they would never meet. And if I end that here, I can create some really neat bamboo plants. Two lines that are parallel form the stalk. I'm going to end them here. And then these two sides are parallel. If I want to draw it faster, I can. I can use the side of my brush. Whoops. But you want to make sure if you when you do it that they're never that they're equal distance for this. And I'm going to have mine go off the page. Right there. Then I'm going to stick some bamboo leaves in. I'm just going to press down with my brush and print one. I press with my brush and let the belly of the brush touch the page, and then I lift and flick to print my leaves for bamboo. And I always put them in groups of threes or fives. There's another bamboo leaf there. 
groups of three. Maybe I can have some leaves come off the top. One, two, three. And I'll have some little ones come off the side here just to fill up this little space. One, two, three. I'll stick five in in this group. Four, five, there. Okay, so there's some parallel lines that I'm using for my bamboo. And you can think of other ways of using parallel lines in your picture, too. You don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. I'm just illustrating my knowledge of my lines, and that's what I want you to do, too. Um, the next type of line I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to add some more perpendicular lines to this picture. And I'm going to stick in, in the center here, rows of um, ginger plants right in here. And I'm going to stick them perpendicular to the ground and again varying the heights you never want to have the same and maybe one real tall one in the middle whoops that's a little crooked so here's a row of perpendicular lines that intersect here the ground see how it's coming through the ground and then forming these right angles here there's another row of perpendiculars and then I can stick in the leaves and when I do the leaves I make sure I I'm loading up my brush right now. I can print the leaves. So let the brush do most of the work. Just lift and press. I can print right down the side. Lift, press. Just kind of press. Press. That's a quick way of printing leaves right down the side. So now I have some perpendicular lines. And this is going to form ginger plants. And on top of these ginger plants, I'm going to use some obtuse angles. Now, an obtuse angle is bigger than a right angle. And I'm going to use the obtuse angles as my ginger flowers. So I'm going to go ahead. Now, if I stick on, if I imagine, say, a straight line down the center, and then if I make my angle come out from here, I want it to be bigger than a right angle. So that's almost a right angle. A right angle is about this big. So I need to make this an obtuse angle, so it needs to, needs to clearly show that it's bigger than a right angle. So I'm going to come out here. Now that's almost a, uh, a 180 degree line. It's almost a straight line. So this would work right in here. And I'm going to fill it in with some petals of my plants. You just want to make sure that when you do this, it's clear and easy to see. So here again I go. I'm going to go a line, then form an form a angle here, straight line coming out. And I'm going to make it obviously bigger than a right angle. So if I'm turning my head to the side, it's not it almost looks like a right angle, so obviously bigger there. Now it's obviously bigger than a right angle. And I'm going to fill that in. So this angle here where these two lines meet in this area, I'll show you with the darker. This is now more than a right angle. Okay? This is more than a right angle. And if you want to make it part of your plant, you can even do that. Just add some more design in there. And you can continue those all in here and make many of those if you'd like, right in here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is a ray. And I'm going to use the sun as my illustration for a ray. You could also do nighttime sky, a nighttime sky and use stars. But this is the, Henri Rousseau often uses this uh, fireball orange sky or moon. And it's the reflection. The ray would be the, the start of the ray is the actual sun. And the shine of the sun coming out, and that's actually radiating out. It comes from the word ray, radiating. Radiating out from the center. Oh, I keep on getting mine bigger, trying to make it a perfect circle here. Um, the actual, the, the, the shine of the sun is never ending. It starts at the sun, the actual sun, the fireball, the light of the sun, and then the shine comes out and goes infinitely through the space. And it just continues and continues and continues. So this is my start point of my ray. And then I'm going to actually draw in some sun rays coming out. So you can add sun rays in red, orange, yellow, whatever color you want. But this is actually to illustrate my ray, my knowledge of rays. And it's just coming down. And this comes to the sky. And this, this ray just never ends. The light of the sun just continues and continues right through space. And I would do this part last towards your painting if you're going to add a sun or the shine of the stars and you can add many rays if you're doing it at night then you can do the shine of the stars coming through the sky right in here now I'm going to stick in some leaves right now so I'm going to put in some I'm just going to fill in my trees here so these egg, these line segments here I'm just going to pop in some leaves and you can continue this 
adding and painting, this is just how I do my leaves, adding and painting and pressing until you get something uh, that you're happy with. And you can continue on with more of the lines and line segments and parallel lines and obtuse angles and right angles as you'd like and add, just use your imagination and fill up the whole page. But be prepared to be able to identify. You want to be able to identify the things that you've done. And here's my final picture.